Hey y'all, uh, Ebony here this evening. Today I want to talk about what we as believers um, need to do in light of these um, continuing tragedies that face us. So, um, many of you may not know, I live in St. Paul, Minnesota. Me and my family just moved here actually um, two months ago. We moved from Roseville and moved five minutes away from Roseville into St. Paul, Minnesota, and um, which puts us very, very close to where the tragic shooting happened of Philando Castile last week, Wednesday. Um, it was really hard for me that shooting took place on Larpenter and Fry and check this we live on Larpenter and Dale less than five minutes away I drive Larpenter um as in just about every single day unless there's really bad traffic I had just come back home from shopping for my daughter's birthday which was the next day and had um taken a route that was really really close to where that happened and so for me, this tragedy just really hit home and shook me to my core. And I feel like in many ways, I'm still processing. I've been having a really rough week. And when that happened, I was just beginning to wrap my mind around um, Alton Sterling being killed in Louisiana and still dealing with the fact that Orlando happened, what, two, three weeks ago, the continuous assault on black and brown lives, whether we're religious, whether we carry a gun, whether we are LGBTQ, whether we are poor, rich, educated, or from whatever um, background, is really hard to deal with. Um, to me, is just I I don't I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. I just continue to hold out hope that in Christ all things can be made new. And I continue to believe that Christ is a redeemer and that in his blood we are reconciled back to God and back to each other. And so I, I believe that some of that gets worked out in the here, right now, and I'm anxious to see that happen. And I know the fulfillment of that um, happens in Christ's return. And so I look forward to that day. And at the same time, I don't want to have to wait till I go to heaven before I see the relief of my black brown and uh, my black and brown brothers and sisters being killed in the, in the street, like, like they're dogs, like we're dogs. So, um, in light of all that, one of the things that I've been seeing, hearing on social media, um, within, you know, people within my circle who are, may not be conscious or whatever you want to call it, um, is the question that keeps being asked is what, what can we do? What should we be doing right now as believers, those who profess in Christ? And for me, this, this question sometimes rubs me the wrong way because I don't think there's a really clear cut, short, um, one, two, three step strategy to get to the bottom of this. We have to remember that for 400 years, our country has been practicing and has perfected a system of white supremacy and racism that continuously exploits um, African Americans, Native Americans, and immigrants who are black and brown in this country. And so a one, two, three step strategy seems overly simplistic and for me, it cheapens the work that really needs to be done to overhaul this demonic system that keeps begging for blood day after day, year after year. At the same time, I'm, I'm struck by the answer that Jesus gave to the lawyer when he asked, Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, you and I know that that question that the lawyer asked was kind of facetious. He was, a, he was an expert in the law, and so he knew what was actually necessary to et inherit eternal life. And so Jesus put the question back on him. You know what the law says. What does it say? And the lawyer responded, to love the Lord your God with everything and to love 
your neighbor as yourself. In many ways, I believe people already know what to do, what the answer is. No, it's not simplistic, but I don't think it gets any clearer than what that lawyer repeated back to Jesus. Love God. Love your neighbor. And there are many steps to that. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but I feel like when we're loving God with everything that we have and we're loving our neighbor as ourselves, we may mess up, but we can't fail. If we love our neighbors as ourselves, we wouldn't be allowing these tragedies to keep repeating themselves over and over again. We wouldn't be profiling black and brown men. We wouldn't be profiling people who are different than the American standard of um, exceptionalism. If we loved our neighbors as ourselves, these things would, would come to an end. And maybe that's the problem that we face in America. And I can I can say for an African American woman what I have seen is that so much of the American identity is juxtaposed against who I am. If what it means to be an American, if what it means to be white is to not be black, the identity formation that takes process that takes place there is flawed. If your identity is constructed on and against who someone else is, how can you stand? And so that's the question I have today is who, who, who are we? Who, who, who is an American? What does it mean to be white in America? If you find yourself answering that question by comparing and contrasting yourself to black and brown people, I think you need to start that process of identity formation again because that that processing of othering is killing us.